Hi, welcome to the Air Manager API tutorial video series. I said in the introduction video that we'd be getting into doing some coding um, pretty much straight away, but there was uh, a couple of things that I forgot to uh, um, consider in terms of uh, setting up ready for that uh, activity. So this video is not, we're not going to be doing any coding, but we're just going to be uh, looking at the Create Edit tab and explaining some of the features of the Create Edit tab and how to uh, start and um, open and create a, um, an instrument from scratch. If you know how to do that already, you can skip this video and you can jump straight into the um, API functions uh, videos, which will be following this one. So let's get started. Um, I've got the uh, Air Manager um, program open here uh, on the Create Edit tab, and I think uh, I showed the uh, the API um, link um, icon last time, but I didn't explain any of these other links. And and uh, basically, uh, we're going to go ahead and create a gauge, which is where we're going to be putting our code. So we're going to do that first. Uh, and so so uh, if there's uh, any um, concern about our uh, about having to do that and and how that uh, takes place within Air Manager, we should be able to cover that uh, in this video. So we'll um, we'll start on the left hand side here. Fairly self-explanatory. New, clone, and delete are the first three that I want to talk about. New is uh, a way of creating uh, a new instrument. So we're going to click that, and then immediately it comes up with this window to ask us a few of the parameters that we'd like to actually set up um, for a new instrument. So if we know if it's uh, specifically for a certain type of aircraft, we're going to write that in here, say Cessna or, or whatever it may be. I'm just going to choose generic. And then under type, you might write airspeed indicator if, if that's in fact what it is or, or whatever the instrument is. So I'm just going to write uh, API tutorial just for the purposes of this video. Um, I'm just going to put my name in there. Um, the personal um, little tick mark here is just creates this head and shoulders here. So essentially what that does is that sorts this list, puts all your personal instruments towards the top in alphabetical order. So it puts them above the ones that are not personal. They're, they tend to be down the bottom of the list. Um, so it's just a way of keeping the gauges that you're creating yourself uh, up near the top of the list just to make them easier to find in the list. But you can untick that if you wish. Version control, self-explanatory, what it says there. Um, if we want it to um, appear as version 1, then it's 100, as it explains there, just above there. Uh, as we update the um, different versions, if we, if we were to do that with an instrument, we can roll that to 101, 102, or if it's a major change, we might want to go to version 2, however you see fit. The width and height of the gauge. Um, so I would suggest that um, you have a look at some of the ones in the store to get an idea of the sizes of those. You can rescale uh, the gauges, uh, of course, but it is always better, I think, to run them at their native uh, resolution. Um, so for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to choose 200 by 200, and I'll, and I'll show you how you can change these um, so you can have an effect on the different uh, gauge um, dimensions. But this normally you would only set up at the beginning and, and generally would be the overall dimensions of your, your bezel so whether it be a radio or, or a three three inch type instrument um, or gauge um, you would set the dimensions up and I think a lot of the ones in the store for a three inch instrument are say 512 for instance as you saw in the default there when we when we created this new instrument and then you can just tick which sim that your code is going to be compatible with so um, we'd we're going to just tick uh, X plane for the moment, um, but we're going to also look at uh, Flight Simulator um, prepared, um, and the new one most recently added is the uh, FS2 from Aerosoft. And then we're just going to write um, a description in here. You can write as much or as little as you want in there. Um, I'm just going to call it test um, for the moment, but um, you can elaborate on that um, in terms of perhaps how the gauge is operated or some special things that someone might need to know um, in the description there. We click OK and you see here a new instrument's been created. We chose it as a personal instrument so it's got the head and shoulders here on the left. 
um, generic was the description that we used and typed in there. As you see, I've got several other ones that are there, but that will be whatever you happen to type. Uh, you see there's a Cessna 1721 there at the top there as an example. And API Tutorial, which was the name that I, I chose. Now, as I, uh, you can see, some, some of these other ones um, are, are greyed out because they're not selectable at this moment in time. But you can see I can select on that particular uh, API Tutorial now. And if I were to do that, if I wanted a, uh, any one of these, in fact, um, the next button along is the clone um, icon. What that will do is that will clone an instrument. So any one of these, if I wanted to, say, um, get one of the online instruments from the store and I wanted to uh, not um, break or um, change the actual uh, one that I downloaded, I can make a copy, essentially. That's what the clone tool does. It just makes a copy of that gauge and then I can rename it slightly and um, I can start working on that cloned copy um, without... Uh, risk of uh, mucking up the original so that's what clone does deletes fairly obvious again you just select on uh, whichever one of these and you click delete and it deletes it uh, completely so that's them uh, three basic um, controls um, submit and export submit will enable you when you complete your instrument and you're happy with it you can submit that um, to the online store so it doesn't go directly into the online store there is a vetting process um, that sim innovations do on the gauges to make sure that um, one it works um, as as you believe it should and that there's no errors and that it's up to the quality of the instruments that um, the rest of the ones that are in the store um, so there's a little bit of a delay in terms of when they appear in but that's what that submit button essentially sends uh, your instrument code images everything um, to sim innovations and then um, should hopefully uh, all being well appear in the online um, store and this number's growing all the time export if you wanted to uh, say before you deleted this out of here and you wanted to keep a copy of the thing or for some reason you wanted to send it to someone on the forum or you wanted to use it and import it into uh, something else later on this export function creates a zip of your entire um, instrument such that you can save it into your file system uh, and you can retrieve it at a later date with a, with an option up here called import. So import obviously being the opposite of export. Um, when you export, it'll ask you where you want to save it. Um, and similar to the import, when you import, you go then select the, uh, any instrument that maybe someone sent you and you can import um, that zipped file that's been exported on another uh, user's uh, version of Air Manager into your your Air Manager program and it'll appear in the list here. Um, this PC, um, meaning this computer that I'm currently running on, you may see if you had some different um, versions of Air Manager uh, or Air Player connected there, you may see, or, or Raspberry Pi version, you may see uh, the different uh, machines uh, listed here. I've only got this uh, Air Manager running on this one machine at this particular time, so there's only one that appears in there, but that's where you'll find them in that drop down list here and then these pertain to the um, or predominantly to the uh, to the individual gauge so the test and the edit ones particularly um, to the individual gauge so if we select our generic API tutorial that we created you can see the run button is highlighted there if I press uh, run it's just appeared on my other monitor for a minute I'll just bring it back here you can see our 200 by 200 instrument um, that we created earlier as it is run so this is a way of running individual instruments for testing purposes and it makes use of this uh, console and the subscriptions area here if you had code in there you, you you'll see as we go through uh, how you make use of the uh, subscriptions area and the console area at the bottom here so because we this is only a blank instrument at this moment and we haven't created anything we just have our blank um, 200 by 200 instrument we can click on the, um, while that's running, just to demonstrate the info uh, button, what that does. When you click on info, that brings up the same window that you originally saw when we did the new create and is already pre-populated with all the information that you keyed in at the very beginning. So if we want to, we can change, for instance, uh, any of these parameters. We can add to the description. We can add uh, more compatibility with different sims by ticking these uh, boxes or removing the ticks, however... 
uh, we want to do it completely editable every single uh, aspect of this um, we can change after the event so you don't have to worry about getting it too accurate at the beginning so I've changed that to 400 now I'm going to click OK you see it's still running at 200 by 200 because um, I run the previous version of the instrument so what I need to do to get it to rerun I either press run again and it refreshes and reruns or I can just press stop and run so for just to show you um, I'm just going to press stop you can see stop then becomes grayed out because you can't stop anything that's not running so uh, we'll run it again and now you see we've got, now got a 400 by 200 uh, instrument again it's blank but it's now come up with a new size so what we'll do is we'll just change that back to 200 by 200 and you can see if it's just okay now I'll just press the run button how that just refreshes now with run back to 200 by 200 and I'll press stop for the moment so we've spoke to, uh, about info folder and script um, are ways of getting to the code and the resources um, to do with the instrument that you're um, you're creating so again for this particular API tutorial instrument if I click on folder that takes me to the um, the root of the folder for the instrument that I'm creating so you can see it, it gives this very long um, unique number for each of the instruments when you do a new create or if you do a clone it creates a unique uh, number for your instrument so it can't get confused with any of the other ones and as part of that um, folder structure um, you end up with a logic Lua file which basically it's the same as if you press the script button which I'll show, in a, show you in a, uh, a moment it, it takes and opens your editor tool and shows you the contents of that um, logic.lua file uh, for scripting which is the um, the area where we do our editing of the API functions we have an info file which is an XML file which contains a lot of useful information about the gauge you don't need to worry about that one too much and then two folders uh, lib and resources so resources um, is blank at the moment because we haven't created anything but this is where we put all our images our PNG images um, and our fonts and any other resources um, for the guy uh, for the instrument and for the gauge you'll see as we start doing some of the API functions there'll be some items in the resources folder as we move along and the same for the lib folder blank at the moment but this is an area where we can expand our um, our Lua code um, repository so essentially this logic.lua is our master it always runs this one first but we can call other functions within other libraries which basically are just Lua files they reside in here we can call them whatever we want um, the functions um, you can uh, give unique names to and then you can call those functions from logic.lua or you can have multiple um, different Lua files within here and you can call different functions within different files it really doesn't make any difference again um, that's probably more for a, a complex instrument where um, the code starts getting rather long for logic.lua so rather than have you know 10,000 lines of code in logic.lua that you have to scroll through to find different elements of the code you can split it up into more manageable chunks and, and split those files off and that's where they go in the libri, uh, lib folder so that explains the folder uh, structure and then as I said earlier if you press uh, script script will open um, your um, code editor I spoke last time about uh, notepad plus uh, plus and the fact that I use Komodo edit so what essentially has happened there it's opened Komodo edit and um, it's opened this logic.lua file which is the one associated with our gauge don't worry about these ones too many that's a, a few other ones I, uh, I've been working on recently um, and it's opened up a blank um, because this is just a brand new blank instrument um, a blank um, coding editor window um, ready for us to start um, typing code uh, into so we'll uh, definitely be getting into the uh, API functions um, in the next video and this is where we'll be uh, we'll be entering the code and you'll see as we work through the different examples uh, of the different API functions thanks for watching and um, we'll be back soon with the uh, API functions. Thanks.